Ladies and gentlemen, if you're in the Chicagoland area on October 20th, we are doing a live show sponsored by the Chicago Podcast Festival at Hungry Brain from 3 to 5. We are doing a show with Please Make This. So please check us out at the Chicago Podcast Festival.org for more information. We'd like you to please make this with a brew with you. Oh, it combines! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 203 of A Brew With You. I am one of your hosts, Blake Michael, accompanied by the caffeinated gent himself, Jeff Stewart. Give me some more coffee. I'm ready to go. You ready to go, man? I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. It's um, noon on a Sunday, which is yes. a very odd time for us recording, but... Uh, We've had beer, we, for, beer for breakfast, coffee for lunch. I have not had... <laughs> I'm been excited because we haven't done a coffee episode Yeah, in a it while. has been a while. And I haven't had beer in the morning quite some time because I'm in my <laughs> 30s now, and it's... Um, it's not you don't get that that boost of alcohol in the morning no, anymore. if you have a beer for breakfast you'll be hung over by noon yeah yeah but someone who also is very very excited that we are having coffee for this episode and yes. not beer joining us for the very first time i officially met him only two days ago and he was more than happy to be on the show in two days the one and only brad pike <laughs> hello welcome man brad uh, you met him two days ago i met you about 20 minutes ago yep, yep. welcome I think that's what the show's all about. I love this. Just to be clear, uh, they said that I had to be here at noon, (laughs) and then they said that I could have chosen other options. No, no, no. no. They lied to me. We lied to you. We were testing you. Yeah. But you know what, though? You still fell through. So now maybe, you know, it's just going to be now perks from now. It was like you go through the gauntlet, (laughs) and now it's just like, oh, we're just going to, you know, put you on a pedestal from now on. Like, that's the (laughs) year material right here. That's true. And you did show up on time as well. So we said around noon, and you showed up at 12.01. You did something. I'm not joking about this, Brad. (laughs) How you're in my good graces immediately. (laughs) Do guests not normally show up on time? If they show up. Oh, if they even show up. So we, something's been up with 2019. You know, we're doing this show for four years. Next episode will be our four-year anniversary woot show, woot. which is the live show. It's crazy. But I don't know what's been going on this year, but we have had one too many cancellations for, for comfort. Like, people, like with the show, we book someone two months at a time, and then it's a week. Like, are you yeah, ready? Yeah. By, oh, no, I forgot. I'm going on a trip. Oh, no, I can't now. Like, yeah, yeah. would you have said anything? Yeah, if, yeah. You got to let us if know. I, I mean, what is going on? And then, oh, not only that, you show up on time. For an improviser, that's pretty great. I mean, yeah. that's great. <laughs> that is I mean, <laughs> you know, you're, you're killing it. You're two yeah. for two. It's amazing. <laughs> when, um, so that's how Brad and I met through improv. We'll talk about that. But yeah, I always feel improvisers are late a lot. I feel like you know, warm up time is at you know seven forty five, and we go on at eight thirty or something like that. And it's like usually people are showing up at eight fifteen, eight twenty. <laughs> you know, does that you have that experience? Yeah, yeah. I mean, every show. At IO, uh, you know, I house manage at IO, and every show there starts late. <laughs> <laughs> every single show. Not maybe like not late egregiously we late. Like sometimes, most of the time, it's like 10 minutes. Yeah, maybe like seven, eight oh, okay. minutes. Right. But every once in a while, there was a show the other day that started like 15 minutes late. 15 minutes late? Mm-hmm. That's late. That's late. Yep. I mean, showtime, that's. Oh no, we're just making sure all the yeah. audience members have their tickets. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right, right. right. They were like performers were still arriving. Oh, that's brutal. Oh, they were still setting up their tech. Oh. That's man. that's pretty classic. It's that's like people brutal. bringing their tech in at the last. So what second. do you tell the audience then? You just be like giving you more time to get another drink and a bathroom break like or do you just say, "Hey, this fucker's late." I just look in and I'm like, "Hope it works out." <laughs> <laughs> Hope they're Hope, funny. Thanks Hope for the staying. show happens. <laughs> I mean, if the show fails, it's on the producer. Maybe yeah. you could just pull it off like it's a, a strategy by the comedy theater to say, like, it, it's funnier when you're a little bit more mm-hmm. boozed up, right? Yeah. Ha ha. You know, yeah, just right. make some joke of that. There was, um, I remember there was a great, uh, one of my, my favorite Second City main stage show was um, South Side of Heaven. Mm-hmm. And the opening, to, they did that like snow delay or a rain delay, and they, mm-hmm. they, they had that interview with the audience member. And then they were getting actually getting sound bites mm. from that audio, and they used it later in yeah, the show. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it was actually a really cool strategy to like make you feel it being delayed, but then the payoff was so good. Sure, sure, that's cool. That was Io the does that exactly. first main stage <laughs> show I ever saw when I moved here was Southside of Heaven. Well, you and I wow. mm-hmm. 
have one thing in common already. How that, that was the first the show you saw? That was my first main show. Was it really? Show. Yeah. That and was then, a long time ago now, but yes. And then it was my favorite up until Dream Freaks Fall From Space. I never saw that yeah. one. Never that saw one. Has that, how, how, very good. How old was, was that one? It's like a year old. It's the one right before the one that they're on. Well, no, it's the one two ago, I guess. Well, So there was Dream Freaks, there was Algorithm Nation, and now they're on... Uh, I think they might be in process. Okay. Maybe. I haven't seen a mainstay show in quite some time. It was, um, I used to go to see every one, obviously when mm-hmm. I was doing the class and everything yeah. like that. And I think just since I've been out of the game for, well, technically out of the game for two days now. Oh, oh another, yeah, for yeah, a little foreshadowing <laughs> but, here. Yeah. I've been out for a year and a half and then I just, it just kind of life changed. And, but Howard, I love doing this show to bring people on like yeah. you or friend to friend or people I haven't seen in a while because that's what it's all about. Yeah, so. meeting new people and stuff like that. You know what also we do on the show is not try beer, but I'll yeah. uh, do my rigmarole anyway. Give me a brew still. For any of you joining us for the very first time, a brew with you is where Jeff and I and sometimes Brad will try a brand of coffee that we never had before while discussing random topics with the whole episode being released on Monday. If you like what you hear, like what you see, like what you feel, go to patreon.com slash a brew with you to try uh, for your extra rewards and perks and just uh, support the show. Uh, today, uh, we're doing a coffee show because uh, this gentleman here was house managing until 4 a.m. Yep. And we could, we, we, it's a yeah. long story, but we're shooting at noon yeah, on a Sunday. It's afternoon. <laughs> yeah. And we don't want to drink beer right now. Yeah. So I wanted to have you try this though. This is a coffee that, uh, Naomi, producer of the mm-hmm. show, is uh, addicted to right now. I know that you. I want to talk to you about this. Yep. I know you know of this, or at least yep. do some hodgepodge. Know a lot about it. I've tried it this week, and damn, it's tasty. That's very good. Have you heard of this, Brad? This bulletproof coffee. No. Oh, it collagen. Yeah. <laughs> what is the deal with collagen? It's like everyone face, is obsessed a, with collagen. It's, it's just it's healthy for you. Is it face or hair? Or? It's, it is. Yes. It's face nails, and hair. <laughs> nails, nails, wrinkles, hair, yeah. skin, Every, everything. Your like cup that. Here. So uh, I want to have I have one of these containers I hear a bulletproof. It's already pre-made. I would like we all to try it okay. and see what your thoughts are. So right. bulletproof came very popular with the keto diet. Exactly right. Yeah. So this is where it's kind of came from right here. Um, and one more for you. Can I ask? Yes. How much are these? These that's because we're I, having one between yes, the three of us right because now. Because the thing that I know about these collagen things is that they are very expensive. expensive. I I know how much those are. If you don't. We spare no express. Uh, spare no express. We spare no expense. We spare no brew. express. <laughs> Hello, we're uh, drinking he brews needs with coffee. people. He needs coffee. I need it right now. <laughs> um, how much do these cost? Well, I think yeah. I didn't buy these, uh, but Naomi told me to have one of these on the show, and I didn't want to use three of these on the show for you, yeah. so I wanted to just split this so we could taste it. But how much are these, Jeff? They are four dollars a piece. That's a lot of money for coffee for yes. a little for a little, little tiny thing. Yeah. rectangle. So this is exactly. Uh, 11 fluid ounces. Okay. So. Mm. I home make this all the time. How do you home make it, Jeff? So I, well, let's taste it first. Okay. And well, I want to see Brad, it. thank you for the last minute uh, show up, and we really appreciate <laughs> yes. you being here. We really do. No thank problem. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I'll do anything. Mm. Interesting. I actually like my homemade version better. Oh, oh, look at you. Uh, mm. How do you feel about that, Brad? It's really Ooh. good. It's good. It just doesn't taste very it doesn't taste very coffee. Exactly. I'm the same. It tastes very buttery. Uh, so, it tastes very. I mean, this for four dollars. So this also has brain oh. octane oil, which is which is big. yeah. The oil. It tastes <laughs> like oil. <laughs> oh, I can feel my hair getting longer. It doesn't taste bad. It's just that it it tastes like there's medicine in it. I also don't. <laughs> like nah, that in doesn't it. make it sound good. Well, was this but paint I like, detected? <laughs> God, I love these things. Includes zero sugar and zero added sugars, but there's three sugars in the ingredients. So you know, let's, what are those three ingredients of sugar then? Gum, asasia, and gel in gum. Those are both sugars. So when you see mm. gum, it's always sugar? Sure. It's just they don't have to call it sugar. So like xanthan gum is, is sugar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I was literally, like, yeah, it says zero. What I make sugar. with mine, I use ghee, butter. That's what's in here. Uh, yeah, butter, um, coffee. The collagen and like just like a cinnamon, and then I just put it in a blender and mix it with the coffee. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. That sounds cinnamon. good. You should add the cinnamon here, and make it pumpkin for Pumptoberfest. Right, we normally do Pumptoberfest. We'll continue that next week. But yeah, I mean, this is a, it's still pretty good. The octane I'm, oil. I'm gonna tell you the, the oil truth. that you taste. I think this is not that good. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we give you a third. That's, yeah, I, I enjoy it, but 
I'm with Brad. I think it's misleading to say this is coffee. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wouldn't necessarily start my day with it. I think the the appeal is oh, the yes. fact that it has collagen and it's healthy. And the ghee. The ghee is the like ghee. the big thing. It's it's the right. keto the ghee diet. Do? It's, oh. it's, it's a it's a it's a it's pure a, kind of butter. It's a clarified butter. butter. Yeah. It's like so if you boil butter and uh-huh. you scrape the top of the part that boils, that's the clarified part. And that's what that's we like, want. That's what we want. <laughs> Let's scrape that's the what butter. you're tasting right there. Is a scrape of butter. <laughs> Octane oil is very expensive and good too though. See it does say it's essential for hair, skin, and nails. There you go. You're going to look beautiful after this. Yeah, you're going to go home just feeling refreshed and gorgeous. <laughs> just, just gorgeous. That's how it always works, right? And that's when they market uh, everything. Just oh. drink this and Octane, you're beautiful. Octane oil powers your brain and curbs snack attacks. Oh, Actually, I'm not going to lie about this. I, so I tried the couple of these this, this week yep. in the morning. I'm not joking. Like when I had one of these, my what? hunger was gone. Like I was usually I'm very hungry in the morning or... I had this, and I was yep. like, I wasn't craving food. Well, that's what's important on the keto diet is that this is your breakfast. Like it, uh, it replaces your breakfast, but it gives you all the nutrients that you need already. That's good because I have not eaten. Oh, well, there oh. you go. In a long well, time. Now you're, <laughs> and I didn't want to bring this up, but I put a sandwich in my in my bag because I didn't have time to to eat it. And then I was like, and then I got here, and I was like. I'm not going to be able to just oh. sit here on a podcast a and, and just like sadly be like, and what are we talking about? <laughs> mm. no, the crunch fine. of lettuce. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a comedian. <laughs> yeah, and people are like, oh, this is ASMRing me. That's good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Have you listened to any of those? Like, Man. have you actually watched those? The ASMRs? I watch those every single night. Do you really? Yeah. Every single night. And, and you're not joking day. right now. It's hard to tell. I'm you. not You're kidding. one of those dry humor guys. Like, it's, like, no, I, watch, like, I, have I do a watch car, them every single night. And every single night, I feel like a serial killer as I watch. Them. <laughs> I like watching another serial killer do it. Like yeah. someone that like sits in a closet and just talks to you or something like no. that. No, yeah. well, well, yeah, yeah, that sounds like exactly like, like the a kind of serial thing. killer. But like it's the ones that I tend to watch are like, yeah, let's watch a Russian woman describing her jewelry in intimate detail. Oh boy, for two hours, and I'm like watching. Or, or no, 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 the one that really makes me feel like. Uh, a serial killer is the one where it's like just a an Asian woman putting makeup on your face. What? Or like giving you a facial treatment. And I'm like, uh-huh, this is happening to me right now. So they I'm actually like go to the my screen mind. and like pretend like they're putting it on you too? Yes, they, well, it's like a uh, role-playing thing. The, the, I don't think you un- really understand what ASMR is. Well, I know it's like a quiet talking, but I don't. that's like literally all I know it's as actually, far it's as... It's not necessarily like, talking. It doesn't have to be someone you tell It could be someone like just like crunching something with their fingers, you know, like just okay. like... It's, it's yep. this... It's like audio here. What is it? It's audio Some, sensory a meridian response. Okay. ASMR. And so it, it's fake really just, science words. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty much. It's those not, are just YouTube of, words. Those words were not invented by yeah. scientists. They were invented by some kind of crazy new age but it person will be, who was trying to make it sound science. It will be added to the dictionary in probably about two years. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, probably the person who discovered this is like is his his. his not his, his, his definition, not his definition is, um, help me out. Um, your J Stewart, JS, what's your, uh, what is that? Initials. Name? Your initials. Thank God I was having a blank out there. <laughs> you need more coffee. The person's initials are probably ASMR and it's like, I'm making this, yeah, yeah. this is what it is now. It's like, who wants credit for that? But I, um, yeah, they, I've seen a lot of these just as a curiosity to see the range of these. And I remember like they getting celebrities in on this, like Cardi B oh, yeah. was yep, doing this yep. thing. And it was like a really like sexual thing for Aubrey her. Aubrey Plaza has one. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to find like a real popular one. right I now. saw some guy. Gentle Whisperer is the popular one. If you type There's in some Gentle guy. Whisperer, pl- quick plug for Gentle Whisperer. <laughs> a, uh, oh, yeah. A, oh yeah. That's great. <laughs> that, yeah. I oh, made this, that I know, noise. This is the one. You're right. This yeah. is the girl I've seen before. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Isn't there one that just like chews in the microphone? One million She's a, a woman with a Russian accent, and that's a big thing in the world of ASMR is if you have a uh, a particular accent. So like people with Finnish or Icelandic okay. accents. There's a... B- oh, here we no, go. I'm sorry. I apologize. It was an ad. Uh, there's like a video of Bjork describing the okay. interior of a television set that she has taken apart. Get the fuck out. Are you serious? Yes. People- and it has millions and this millions is, of this views. This one we're about to watch... Has 21 million views. All right. Yeah. What are we going to watch here? This is Marie again with you. Do you hear that? This video is going to be fully dedicated 
to your relaxation. In this video, I'm going to use my 3D microphone for a full uh, effect of my presence with you in this video. Yeah, when we play, yeah, when I look at it with other people around, it makes it's me feel creepy. like the creepiest, it's saddest, loneliest, saddest, <laughs> most miserable, disgusting human being. But when you're by yourself, when I'm by myself, this is when you light the candles so and get the yeah, oil. Yeah, porn. I mean, it's it like when you watch it, it with other people, it has a different vibe yeah. than when you're watching it by yourself. It doesn't turn me on as much. I don't, I don't get turned on even remotely by these videos. And in fact, no. many of the ones that I watch do not have. It's just like, I think that the uh, people just don't want to watch one that's like a, a weird, hideous old yeah. man telling them about their jewelry. I heard about. So this is, a, this is Cardi B doing it. Plug here. My name is Cardi B, and I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. ASMR style. So you wow. see her like. Why it, is she going back it, between two mics? In the video, because well, it gives you different like left and right uh, channels. Okay, okay, okay. And her like looking at the screen with her, her hand going, that's like also a visual thing. It's also like a visual stimulant that it's not just the audio. Okay. It's her like thinking like, you're, gotcha. I don't know. It's, it's that sense of you think you're being touched, but her doing it, you're like, you're okay. actually feeling it, but you're not sort of thing. Well, I saw one actually yesterday. It's a guy that helps girls going through like dating type of thing, like or mm. through breakups actually. And it's, it, it's an ASMR. Yeah. So the guy is like talking like quietly oh, to the no. girls yeah. and, and he's got like millions, he's making tons of money right now. So he's telling her it's like, it's okay. Like you're going through the breakup and he's actually pretending like he's like brushing the hair back on their face and telling them that it's okay. And it's like, I was just like watching this on the news the other day. I was like, what is happening right now? Like this is creepy as hell. But what I hate about this is like, first off, I, this is my mindset with this shit. I am so, I have an internal conflict. First off, my first thought is like, you can do whatever you want. You're not doing anything illegal. Mm -hmm. it, it's fine. Some people get off on this. Some people just like it. It's comforting. And you're getting some, you're getting 21 million views on YouTube for this. Like more power to you, right? But the other side is like, can you just toughen up a little bit? Like, yeah, can we right? just like at least just, you know, can you walk down the street with some yeah. confidence here? This I is mean, like babying you. It's it's just... Is it not? I go back and forth with it. I don't know. I uh, just, my internal struggle. As as somebody who is a uh, very I, frequent I was viewer say, of these I'm not, videos, I'm not I can tell you that you. you're right. I'm not very tough. I will not toughen up. Are you caught I'm a sensitive little boy. <laughs> <laughs> Indulging his darkest psychological like whatever creepy weird <laughs> a psychiatrist would look at these videos and be like and you watch these every night okay all right we're we've move got a to lot to unpack here <laughs> and then you realize that the psychologist gone so oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're like oh no and then yeah, right. going back just tell me about anything just tell me about yeah, yeah. cheetos oh well, you i like <laughs> yeah. Like, ah! Oh, I actually do not like the chewing videos. Oh, okay. There's like a, another famous uh, ASMR video that's just Andy Warhol eating a burger. What? I'm not kidding. It's super famous. And uh, and how many times have you watched this? No, I don't like it. <laughs> I, don't I like do Andy not Warhol. like people eating food <laughs> yeah. or like the chewing noises or crinkling or yeah. any of that shit. I just like people whispering, and usually it's like them either like going through a book and like explaining what's in the book like there well, could be educational yeah yeah no <laughs> there's a lot of them that are like uh uh somebody like today we're gonna be talking about jupiter and them just kind of going through facts about jupiter and then on if if you watch it like it's that you, you don't even see the person it's just clip photos of jupiter i feel like this is like yeah. You're, it takes you back to like third grade and you had a crush on your teacher or something like that. Mm. And it's like, well, today we're going to learn about, you know, our multiplication tables. Yeah, you're like, oh. you're like, you're like zoning out. Yeah. Getting back to that, like, remember your first crush when yeah. you were a kid. Yeah. Oh, I feel weird. Right. Well, I, Everything fades it's away around It's not really her. a crush feeling. <laughs> uh, do you get ASMR? I get it. it I, I mean, I, I really it's do. Not, it's really not do. like a crush feeling. No. It's like, it's, it's sort of indescribable. But I remember like being a kid and, and sometimes like a voice would just like, 
trigger my like it it's would send me into like a hypnotic state and I'd just right. be like staring at this person and just like uh huh this is a civil war uh huh states rights uh huh <laughs> <laughs> all right that's what it's about Texas history the most bloodiest session in history uh-huh. okay. Yeah. okay death everywhere and okay. we're yeah. still dealing with the consequences even today <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that to your point we I, we can go through the whole definition of this and all that but I I feel Everyone has this a trigger for it. I mean, that's one hundred percent true. That, but it, the triggers, like you said, like I you don't like, think everybody gets ASMR. But sometimes I, I tell people about ASMR, and they go, "You're a freak." No, I would. <laughs> but I think those are people. Like even I get it because, it, it, like, there's different triggers though. Like you just said, mm-hmm. you don't like the crunch, but you like just the wo- voice, of the whisper. But mm-hmm. everyone, the best way I can describe it is like. You ever uh, whatever that sense the sensation was, you saw something visually or you heard something, and you kind of get like that those goosebumps in the back mm-hmm. of your neck yep, or something. Yep. That's the best way I could describe it. Yeah. Everyone like gets oh, it's at like, some point. It's not even back. It's like inside right. your brain. Right. I I know what you're talking about. That tingle. Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, we're not talking about the uh, coffin. We're like tingle we're in our hair. Not talking about the collagen. That it's really the collagen the whole time. Oh, you know what's another big one? Uh, no Country for Old Men. The the uh, coin flipping scene. Oh. Yeah, the, that scene. That scene triggers people. Javier Bardem is a big one. There's there's that other scene <laughs> where he's in uh, what's that movie? Uh, is it Skyfall? Yeah, yeah. Skyfall. Where he's James like Bond. he he has this really great monologue where he's walking down a very long hallway. And talking about rats. Yeah, yeah. He's talking about rats. This is man. This really makes me feel like a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, I really like the rat monologue from Skyfall, and I've seen it. <laughs> Hundreds of times. <laughs> you watched it at 5 a.m. this morning. Yeah, yeah. Was, oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. You know what you get uh, when all the rats have eaten each other? You get one rat that only has taste for rat. <laughs> it's true. Good night. <laughs> that's not, that's not yes. that far off. Sweet monologue. dreams. Hey, that was... Uh, he was a good villain in that. Yeah. And the other thing, if you have a good, good ride and good delivery, you can yeah, say whatever you want and be like, hey fucked up but i believe you and now i want you to, it's like i love the movies whatever it may be if you're a crew fighter, it's just like if you just sell it like i i you ever have i always root for the villain growing up always did i always like the villains more yeah. mm. i always did you were talking about who's the serial killer now mm. but this week on red flags with jeff what's <laughs> fucked up in your life <laughs> yeah, right. i'm not admitting anything after this okay no. What, do you villain, s- you- what do you say on the first date? Oh, he said he always roots for villains in movies. and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But very slowly. <laughs> this. Stabity, Have you seen stab. the new Joker? I did see the oh. new Joker. Did, did you ch- like it? I, I did. Uh, um, didn't love it, but I liked it. Okay. I liked it all. I'd give it like a uh, 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10 sort of thing like okay. that. Um, I've heard good things. So Jennifer, my fiance, she loved nice. it. I would say the very first third of the movie, you know, like three acts, the first third of the movie was tough. Like, not necessarily violent, just really tough to see someone with mental illness and just the yeah. world just shit on you. That was tough. Yeah. It was tough. But there were some things, I won't spoil anything, but there's some directions the movie took that is like, I don't want to focus on this. I'm not, it's this is a character side. I want to focus more on this, not any really all this other stuff going on. Um, and to say the truth, I think the hype around it was this ultra violent, like bloody movie. Like, no, there's yeah. probably two violent scenes, and there, I guarantee you've seen more violent stuff before. For sure. But Phoenix killed it. Killed it. Mm. He's a great actor. Always been a great actor. He did a great job. Um, and I don't think if you walk out of the movie, you would say this sucked or anything. Right. By yeah, any I've means. heard a lot of good things about it. Yeah. Did you hear the director? What is his name? Todd, Todd Phillips. Phillips. I believe. Yes was like in some interview and he was talking about how he stopped making comedies because of PC culture. Woke and culture is woke, what he said. Woke culture. Woke culture. And he just couldn't, like, how do you make a co- make comedies in this political climate? Right. And, oh, uh, wow. and, then, and then he came out with Joker, which is about what, Seems to me to be a, a failed comedian, a failed comedian who starts murdering people. <laughs> yeah. It's like, Todd, we might, we need to talk. We need to talk. Maybe about Todd was some second. ASMRs, yeah. you know? Yeah, right. yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> What's That's his uh, ASMR get to? I guarantee you, if you type in uh, Joker roleplay ASMR, <laughs> I'm sure you there will, is one. You will get not just one result, you will get many results. <laughs> I'm sure oh, there I'm is sure. one, yeah. 
Which one? Uh, was Heath Ledger? Yeah. Then there, he was always on. That's, one of oh, yeah. that's right. When he was Stars. Eating. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so definitely that one. But yeah. you're gonna get like a lot of people dressed up like the Joker trying oh, to ASMR sure. you, and you're Harley Quinn somehow, and like. <laughs> And then just it, that's just a transformation of ASMR to something else. I just don't want to go down that rabbit yeah. hole right there. I'm sure there's one out for everybody though. Yeah. So you didn't see it? Then? No, I would it? like to see it though. Yeah, I would. I would recommend it. I, I like. It's one of those things. I'd say he, if he got a nomination, and yeah, also the Oscars aren't just to me. Oscars are just a joke yeah, now. I don't. Joke. No one really. I mean, let's be. Let's see Joker how, must always win the Oscar. <laughs> yeah, wins all of them every year. Whoever plays the Joker yeah. must win the Oscar. Actually, yeah. every Joker. Has been nominated for an Academy Award. Everyone's Jared Leto nominated. at Suicide Squad. Oh, you're Squad. right. He was nominate him for Best Actor <laughs> of All Time. God, <laughs> can you imagine if the Suicide Squad Joker like won an Oscar? That'd, That'd be, be like Three Six Mafia's uh, Oscar all over again. Yeah. <laughs> all serious, no. Like, Suicide Squad did win an Oscar for Best Makeup. Did it? Yeah, really? It won an Oscar for Best Makeup. But that, like right? to say that well, the funny joke about this, like Suicide Squad won an Oscar. Just yeah. Like that's yeah. just crazy. As to a movie about in that. general, yeah. There is a new one coming out. Um, James Gunn. When oh, he really? got fired from Marvel, he's oh, like, yeah, okay, yeah. I'll just do DC. Now so it's just doing... called The Suicide Squad right? Or yeah. something. Interesting. I never saw the first one. You're good. Yeah, that's what I hear. You're good. I don't. I didn't see it. You're good, too. Yeah. I, um, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people hate that I was that like, one. go see Joker instead. Morbidly yeah. curious to see the Jared Leto Joker. It, well, the thing is, the Jared Leto, he, he's seriously in that movie for five minutes. And I'm not exaggerating really? that. I'm talking, like, they advertise it because Joker's so popular. But he, I mean, it's not about him. There's, it, there's, he's in it for five minutes. Yeah. Five That's minutes. That's crazy. Well, they came out, they also came out with that trailer that was set to Ballroom Blitz that right. made it look like Guardians of the Galaxy. Because yeah. clearly, like, I think they released a trailer before that and it was like, everyone was like, Well, wasn't the initial trailer bad. rated R and then they moved it to PG? PG-13. Um, I, I think that the, sounds right. I think that sounds right. I thought the original right. trailer, I was like, oh, damn, this looks crazy. It looks really good. Yeah. And then like maybe a couple months later, I saw another clip of it and I was like, this looks completely different. Yeah. It's like they revamped totally. it and then it was PG-13. I was like, all right, oh, something happened. I heard that like David Iyer, who was the director, he <laughs> like they didn't like his cut of it. He's like the guy who directed right. Training Day and they sent it off to like someone. The, I, the a people, trailer company. Yeah, the people who cut the trailer, Ballroom Blitz, that was so popular. And uh, yeah, so it makes the movie is there's very great, disjointed. There's a great video out there. This guy's a, a YouTuber and by far his most viewed video is his breakdown of uh, Suicide Squad. And he's, mm -hmm. he's in the field of uh, editing and he... The opening of it is like it's a joke, and he's pounding a bottle of whiskey, and he's like, "This is the worst edited movie of all time," and he's telling you like the techniques of editing, wow. and, somebody, and he breaks down breaks why down this wide, is the worst yeah. edited movie. And nerds got big opinions about uh, these superheroes. They, they do, they really do. The worst edited movie of all time. There's got to be something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, you know, before uh, we we're trail on here, I, you know, I just met you a couple days ago. And I don't know, really know much about you, and I just want to know where this ASMR and uh, your uh, fetish of... No, no, no. No, but uh, are you from Chicago originally? Or? I am from Plano, Texas. We did Plano, talk about Texas. that. Texas. That's when mm. my phone rang, and you called me. Mm. I saw Texas come up there, and I remember yeah. that was you now, because I am getting spam calls like crazy oh, yeah. I from just everywhere. Don't, I just, just don't answer my phone, and then every <sighs> once in a while, it'll be like, you know, my answer... Like, I'll check my voicemails, and it'll be like... Uh, <laughs> I don't even something really important like Lauren Michaels here. Uh, just wondering if you're gonna give us a call back about you know what. It's like Fuck. you're like shit. I gotta call. It's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. I it's funny because I just googled Plano, Texas the other day. Why? Oh really? Why? I, I've been seeing. So I drink sometimes Topo Chico, uh -huh. and I was like, where is this thing from? And I've been and I was actually yep. just in Texas last you week. You know what it is? I think it's the it's Dr the, Pepper bottling plant. It very, is oh okay. Based there. So when I was in Austin last week, I saw it like everywhere. I was like, it, maybe is this from Austin? Like what's going on here? And then I looked it up and it's from Plano, Texas, which was like an hour away or something like that or two hours mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, oh, from Austin? I think it's like four hours okay. away. But I was like, interesting. Dumbass. I even know that. Dumbass. Well, Texas is so huge that yeah. it's, it's your sense of distance is crazy. Yeah. That's an understatement, man. I mean, talking to the man who's from Texas, I mean, it is, it is big. Yeah. Everything big in Texas. Everything big in Texas. Did, um, Geographically, it's huge. It, um so did uh, just to make the long story short here did you come to chicago for comedy is that the the reason you trekked all the way up from plano i moved here to do the 
writing program at Second City. Mm. And I can tell you right now, um, I don't recommend that particular program unless you're planning (laughs) on only writing Second Second City City sketches. sketches. It's so true. It's so true. Uh, How long ago did you take that? Like, did you take it about six, seven years ago? Yeah. Yeah, me too. That's we might have been in the same class sometime. Maybe. I, it was so a you, long time ago. You lived your whole life in Texas and came up here. Nice. Cool. It's because Texas isn't funny, Jeff. Yeah, it's, it's not a funny state. Oh, especially it's Plano, big, Texas. Not funny state. Uh, especially Plano. <laughs> the comedy scene there is not so good. It. Well, I would say it's basically non-existent yeah. i mean it's the kind of well it's like most of america doesn't really have a comedy scene yeah. the way you big cities yeah like Chicago, we, New we, York. but yeah i mean there are some pockets though i would say like yeah new york chicago la have a comedy scene austin has a comedy scene mm. okay yeah, I was actually going to bring that up because you just went to Austin. But I, Freaks. I know that there's some places, though, that do have it. Like, I know Minnesota has some pockets of good, like, really, mm. really good improv. Uh, Oregon has some, and Colorado, I think. Oh, three. Colorado and, does. And yeah. I've heard. But I mean, outside of the major, major <laughs> yeah. cities. Didn't someone tell me, like, New Mexico does now, too? Like, it's growing as far as maybe not so much a comedy That's team. just the meth. That's just the meth. Got it. <laughs> Make sure. Makes sense now. You're confusing <laughs> comedy with meth. Damn. Yeah. Again, I did this again. Yeah, I know. Like you gotta tell me to stop Happens doing this over and over and over again. Man, sometimes I'm like, I love this comedy podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's some good comedy. I don't know how you smoke. Yeah, meth. Oh, because we do. Yeah, just, yeah, I think that was it. Yeah, this is meth. <laughs> yeah. it's like a, it's like a Snickers bar. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, like yeah. a flute. Yeah. Um, speaking of meth, didn't you, you were watching Breaking Bad last night, right? <laughs> oh yeah. So I should know what. Smoking yeah, meth looks like. You were, yeah. Did you watch uh, the El Camino, the new movie that got tried? I did. Was it good? It was so good. Yeah, I um, loved it. I yeah. want to watch it. I'm, I'm, yeah. I was not. Um, I'm hesitant about those like spinoffs or yeah. the, all. The, it's mm. like we're in the age of nostalgia, so like prequels or long delayed sequels or spinoffs. But I don't know. This felt like we could get a little bit more out of this because it was like. It's going to be Jesse's show. It's it, not... Yeah, you yeah. Know. It gave me everything that I wanted out of the nice. movie. Nice. And the other thing was like, because the last season was, I would say, the subplot with Jesse was one of the, not just grim and miserable, but kind of sort of insufferable, yeah. like little storyline. I was like, really? Never watched I never watched it. Okay, no. well, really? Still on my list. You're just going to kind of throw them in a hole for a whole season and <laughs> literally and that's it and then like he's out of the hole for like 15 seconds man not a lot of agency for old jesse <laughs> poor jesse in this come back. season so but all of that is justified by this movie like retroactively sweet yeah so you I get, felt you bad for jesse even though it. he was riding that money train after breaking bad his first movie after that was the cursed um, video game movie. Any movie that's based on a video game is always doomed to fail or yeah, horrible. Yeah. And he did, um, I believe it was Need for Speed. Fix the yep, facts yep, on yep. it. Yep. At, right. at the end of every episode, right. we cr- we have a segment called Fixing the Facts and... Airing the Airs. Where we correct everything we got wrong or fill in the gaps for everything we didn't know. What's I, his name? Uh, Jesse Eisenberg. Is that right? Oh, Aaron Paul. But And right? the show, it's Jesse. Oh, the actor's oh, name is Aaron Paul. Jesse... No, you're thinking the actor, Jesse Eisenberg. Is that? Oh, that's the, yeah. the actor from the zombie. Jesse uh, pl- p- Pinkman. Jesse Pinkman. Pink, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Got a lot of, that's a so, lot of names. That would be so funny if his name was Jesse Eisenberg. <laughs> just inexplicable. But which one is Jesse Eisenberg now? Is he the one from the zombie? Zombie Land. Okay, that's uh, okay. Social Network. Yep. Okay. So you came to Chicago to pursue writing and comedy, and then mm-hmm. it was improv the plan, or was it just you were. Uh, uh, figuring out it was like well i'm here for i i was actually only going to move here for like just the period that i was doing the writing program yeah and uh because oh, really? i like really just did not understand i think i was just very uh naive and i really did not understand what it would mean to move here mm. for months and months and months and like <sighs> what 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 i was investing in i just was very naive and very uh ignorant so i think that's i 
I yeah. can say that about any just, educational yeah. step yes. I've made in my life, with high school, with college, what I did after college, like yeah. any step I can look back and like, what the hell is I? You look at, I mean, it's yeah. hard to say now because you have that experience. Hindsight time, 20, how would you know? I but mean, but since I was here, I was like, well, might as well take the. I mean, I thought that Second City was known for improv, right? And so I took the improv classes, and it turns out. Second City is actually very bad at improv, and in fact, they think the re- they think that like oh we're, we're this theater is very bad at improv, so let's just say that it's a tool to get to sketch, and I was like okay well that makes sense because all the improv I see is bad. Well, that's because it's a tool to get to sketch. That's their theory. And yeah. then I would go to and then finally I went to I O and I saw I think it was uh, Revolver. And oh yeah, like, they were great. They were great. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, they're still going." Oh, they are. Yep. Oh, oh yep. wow. And and I was like, "Oh, improv doesn't." And I saw the opener. Uh, this was at the old space. Oh, yeah. And I saw the opener. And, and then revolver. And then I didn't understand that a new show was starting. I think mm. it felt like just show after show after show after show. So then another thing started, and then it was dinner bell. And then between all that, I was like, "All the improv here is." Good. It doesn't have to be bad, sure. like all right. of the other improv I've seen. I, I love, like I love um, that you're just. I love that you just call it out, though. Like, so because I have a lot of people in improv here. They're like, "Well, Second City is like, You're just like, "No, Second City's not good at improv. Like, yeah. that's not their goal." Yeah, I, I love that you're just like Open you, you just lay that it. out there instead yeah. of bullshitting it. It's. I've always said that the what my when I first started improv, mm-hmm. I've said this before on the show. The, the a teacher and mentor of mine was telling me like when I first first stepped in the door and tell me all the paths to go and they said if you want to do second if you want to do improv a second city you you to learn how to write you go to I O to improvise with the team and you go to Annoyance to learn how to fuck goats and I was yep, like yep. huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's about right yeah. yeah so do you recommend the same order to do it if you're gonna recommend it to someone else then or would you go I O first that Annoyance on first it depends on what you want I would actually not recommend second city as at all. if you want to actually learn anything i wouldn't recommend second okay. city because uh, unless you are like very, very i will say the uh, having never done improv before it was probably nice to go through the a through e program but it was like one of those things of uh you know once i got up to speed by like level b or c i was like we're kind of stalling out yeah. here I'm not really, I'm not really learning anything else. Yeah, right. and it's just kind of spinning its and wheels the a little bit. Teachers are kind of tuned out, and they're yeah. thinking about their own Issues. stuff, and yeah. they're just kind of showing up and like phoning it in. And then I went to IO, and it was like, brought the fresh ooh, air. Ooh, it was they they were very uh, intent on really genuinely teaching you. I think yeah. it's nice. funny because we've had a lot of improv, um, improvisers on the show at one point, and a lot of comedians. And honestly, I think it's everyone's original point, what they're trying to get out of it. Because I've had some people who have only done Second City, like Edgar Black. I should say, I've never taken conservatory because my experience with A through E was like not great. And I didn't do, I never auditioned once for conservatory because I was just like, I'm I'm done. I I was done with Second City. Well, it's like such a fundamental difference between these these theaters where like Annoyance and IO and CIC and these other places, uh, it treats their students and their you know, performers like they yeah. are artists and they are performers sure. and they are the lifeblood of the theater. And then at Second City, uh, you know, except for like 10 people, everybody is a customer. You're, and they're trying to make yeah. you feel good about, they, they're trying to minimize your chance of failure. So they come up with like forms and things so that you can't fail. And yeah. I feel like it's like a constant trend though of like guests that we have on here of like saying Second City is not what they expected do we do you, do you guys since you guys have been in the community and you have too like do you feel like it's eventually gonna go away like second is, city yeah no or is, it, is it that's still it big gets of a bigger thing? and bigger and bigger and the amount the number of people because people keep reading bossy pants and they just keep going i'll be the next tina fey i'll be the next but i heard they took a sure. hit recently second Did city I, I, because they don't do like the cruises anymore and stuff like that yeah but they are too big to fail they are just a juggernaut they f- keep expanding and keep getting bigger well, and all everyone knows second city it, that's yeah. what i was about to say like that's the name 
Like you're yeah. from Texas. Yeah. What do you, second city? You go to and then I mean that yeah. was the same thing. I, my first class because I didn't know anything about anything. I came to the, Chicago. There's a to learn limitless about supply of rubes. Right. Yeah. And, and I, chumps I, and marks <laughs> for yeah. them to take advantage of a limited supply. And until somebody writes some book called you know like how second city. Uh, wasted my time and money, you know, by, <laughs> by Brad Pike. Well, by like, <laughs> I don't know, somebody spring. famous, you know, Jason Sudeikis, you know, maybe you can write this book and then do the audio version, but like ASMR. Oh yeah. yeah. Saying, so I should add, you know, City. let's put all I this. I just want in, to hear you flip the pages. Let's put all this in the context of, I'd love a job at Second City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love for you to get on main stage or uh, get on a cruise. I think that ship has uh, if, failed. Jeff, if Andrew Taylor, Alexander yeah, is watching this, I don't mean any of what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I, I, I mean that. I think that's honestly the reason, Brad, that a lot of people I've had on the show, and we've done this for four years, so I've seen some people come and go. That I think that some people just don't want to knock Second City or be honest about it because, like, I want to be employed by them someday. Yeah, or there could yeah. be a chance. You know, they'll never employ what me. Does this remind you of? Guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. What? Oh, that's good. Uh, honestly, that's delicious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's caffeine, baby. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yes please. Yes, yes. Um, well, yeah, we're that's fine. Mixing it with the old stuff, it's good. I don't. Yeah, I yeah, don't you care. Won't taste it anymore. Well, it's the yummy, yummy collagen. Mmm. Thank you. Loot it up. So, you're still uh, you're rocking right now. Um, let's plug it one more time. Uh, we'll plug the first time. We'll plug it again at the end of the show. Uh, at I O, what team are you on? Uh, Devil's daughter. Oh, I have mm-hmm. seen you then. Mm-hmm. I've seen them perform. Like, how long have you been on together as a team for a while, right? Uh, I would say like six years. Yeah, I've seen you play. Oh, wow, okay. I've absolutely mm-hmm. seen you play before. That's how I've recognized. Like, I met you two days ago officially, but recognize you. For, and that's probably what it was. Devil's daughter. There's a couple of like, two other people on that on your team that I might have crossed paths with too. So, devil's daughter. Speaking of crossing paths, dude. So you you jumped in. Th- Excuse me. You jumped in the game a couple days ago for uh, oh, a little, a little yeah. step in, huh? We'll talk about this. Yeah, I was uh, doing improv for eight years and then left in February of 2018. And then uh, my old teammates, uh, they have an independent show uh, and they just jump around. Independent team is you're not dedicated to a theater. You you go wherever there's an opportunity or you're opening up for another act, whatever it may be. And they're, we've had all three of them on the show one time. We've had yep. Aaron on the show, Jack on the show, and Shirag on the show. And they're the team. And what they do is they invite, uh, each one of them invite a friend to okay. play with them. So there's nice. the three of the core, and then there's three other people who are friends. And then the six of us as a group play for the first time together. And they do this every week? Uh, whenever. Okay. Uh, once a week, twice a week, once a month, whatever it may be. Um, and Aaron said, hey, I know uh, you've been out of the game for a while, and but I'd like you to be my friend for this show. And I said, what the hell? I haven't played in a year and a half, so I'm, I know I'm going to be rusty, and I haven't worked that muscle in a while. But I said, why the hell not? Yeah. And um, Aaron came to the, my engagement party. So he, he, he that's when he asked. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. And then Brad, you were one of the friends. And I was one of the friends. And that's how I fit. I recognize you, but I never knew you. And uh, first time doing improv in a year and a half. And it was, it was a yeah, show. Was <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. it was, honestly, oh, I didn't. I don't it was look. a show. <laughs> yeah. It, so you guys played together on the same stage. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah. It was. Uh, I mean, I haven't played. I had in, fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's. I don't. I mean, old Blake would have yeah, been yeah. like, "Oh my God, why did I make yeah. that move? Why did I do that?" Like now, I'm just like, I don't care. care. I just, I just on stage had fun, and uh, mm-hmm. we actually had some audience reactions. So it's, cool. Know, what else can That's you ask awesome. for? for the audience uh, responded to things, <laughs> which that's what you want, right? Even um, if it's, uh, we might not have gotten laughs, but we did get, huh? <laughs> what? Hot <Okay>. pockets. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, there was like somebody like. Yeah, saying huh, hot pockets, you know, or like <laughs> no, that was a reaction. Was. Or like huh, nipples. Yeah, that was. I think he said something like that. Not gonna lie, I was like, <laughs> there were some choices, and because obviously that's the thing when you were, when you just randomly play yeah. like this. Yeah, there's no synergy yet, or you don't know people, so you're just you just trust each other's mm-hmm. experience. Uh, you had a great move though. I was playing the pregnant woman, and you went up, and you're like, "Mr. President," with my because my baby was like calling the shots, and yeah, you came yeah. up, and the baby was Ooh. with the president. That really took it to crazy town. <laughs> oh, oh, I think Jack took it to crazy town, where I'm playing a pregnant woman. Like, can you go out and get me something? Then he open, he sits down and opens up his mouth and starts gurgling. I'm like, 
<laughs> Dude, you got to throw me a little bit. Like, yeah, I haven't yeah. played in a year and a half. What yeah. am I supposed to do with this right now? <laughs> and then you got taken on a journey. Yeah, yeah. I did. That was, it was fun. It was uh, fun. I mean that sincerely. I wasn't I, like not knocking. Yeah, yeah. Jack did not tell me that we were going to be opening up for Pimprov. Yeah, plug which, Pimprov. Yeah, they, they it's big? a show I, I had always heard of and right. had never seen before. And let me tell you, I will pimp Pimprov. Hell yeah. Because... Uh, People should treat themselves because, like, it's one of those shows that uh, is sort of like a joke show. And then I saw it and I was like, oh, this is definitely a joke, but it is a very funny joke. But they're talented. <laughs> they're yes. talented, though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know the one guy, uh, Warren Phoenix, who's on that mm-hmm. team. Um, but that show, I, I remember first seeing the first time. It was a long, long, uh, it was for the Chicago podcast, uh, Chicago Improv Festival. Mm. And they were honoring Key and Peel there, and Pimprov came out. And gave a little speech for them and did a little um, show for them to honor yeah. Key and Peele. And they got like the honor, like honorary award for at that festival. Yeah, and they um, deserve it. <laughs> they were great. Uh, Pemprov is great. Um, I just think Chicago, the, the CIC Theater in Chicago on Irving Park. I mm-hmm. don't know the address or anything, but just look up the CIC Theater. Uh, Pemprov. Chemically Imbalanced Comedy. Yes. Oh, that's what it stands for? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I've always seen it over there, but I've never been. Yeah, it's a, it's a cute little theater, but yeah. it's it's actually, I think to tell you the truth, I think the, st- the, the stage is great for really improvising. Very good. It's a g- big open space for improvisers. It's a really good improv stage. Um, but it's Pimprov, yeah. They nice. were really good and really shook it up. But Are they weekly? Every Friday yep, night, every I believe. Friday. Yeah. Nice. I, put around them. I wish I would have known you were doing it. I would have gone. But um, when we'll plug you again, Brad, but uh, Devil's Daughters, when do you know what guys normally play? Um, so this is the last month that we would, will be playing on Tuesday nights at 1030. And okay. then we're going to be moving to Friday nights at 1030. Oh, that's a good Ooh, slot. Big time, baby. Yeah, that's a good slot. Love um, I won't tell you what team that slot is, but like, it's a big deal to move into that slot. Yeah, oh, that's nice. huge. I, um, it's prime time. That's ex- that's really exciting to hear that, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, for six years though, like, come on, like, we're, you know, let's, let's get the bump here. Yeah. I mean, I'm very excited to be moving to Friday nights just because uh, Tuesday nights we got a lot of students which is great and we love the student audience because they're very supportive and they yeah. like follow shows and mm-hmm. they like invest in shows but it will be exciting to see about what like what general audience right. mm-hmm. like reacts to and that's I think that was the funny thing was Aaron was um, he came up to us quote unquote apologize quote unquote and he's like uh, yeah I realized that um, we actually had a general audience for our show not like an improv yeah, yeah. show like uh-huh. it wasn't like improviser room we're actually putting for the live audience there so that was like should have like prepared for that a little bit more but oh, that's the, our audience yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> well I mean look I mean, I mean what mean, makes the difference from like an outsider that doesn't just less laughs Brad like, why don't you fill that one in um, there I would say that uh Improviser audiences laugh at uh, things that are not necessarily clever or like witty, but like people fucking with each other or fucking with gotcha. the like insider improv okay. m- rules. So like him, well yeah, Pimprov was doing like little things that the improv audience would get. Like they mentioned Rachel Mason, mm-hmm. or game. they were like, there was a moment where somebody goes. Uh, uh, what did he say? He said, uh, "Do a monologue, bitch." Yeah, yeah. Do a lo- yeah. He was like, "Yeah, no." Yeah, like, nope. Monologue, bitch. He was asking for yeah, someone yeah. to come out and help him, and he's like, "Nope, you're out there on your own." Monologue, bitch. <laughs> yeah, and the general audience might have been like, "Huh, that's very yeah. rude." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. scene okay. partner. <laughs> but at the same time, the pimprov, they were there was like one guy in the stage. He's like, "Hey, sir, can I get your name?" It's this older black guy, and he's like, "Artie." And he's like, "Whoa, you don't fuck with like a guy's <laughs> named Artie, right?" And then. He's like, what do you do, Artie? He's like, I'm a truck driver. Yep, you know? Yep. <laughs> I'm like, I rest my case, yep. you know? <laughs> so um, it was uh, it was a really good show. Um, but yeah, thanks for playing Devil Daughters. And then eventually it'll be Friday at 10.30. Real coming up soon. So congratulations on that. But now, Sweet. good slot. it's time for our game round by Brad's Choice. We are playing, for, it's been a long time since we played this a one. Minute. So it's even better reason to play it. The one and only. Who would win? In a fight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make this little sound effect? Did you make this? Oh, we'll plug some Robbie Ellis. If you don't know. Uh, oh, Robbie Ellis. Robbie I know Ellis Robbie Ellis. He, he did oh, all the I love Robbie He's Ellis. Um, he did all the music for a musical that I wrote. No kidding. Yeah. Is it still going on? Is it over? Are you doing it's it? It's over now. Oh. It's called Camp Psychopathways. Oh, that's a cool name. Oh. And I just saw him last night for uh, Riff. 
Nice. Oh, very he does cool. The yeah, music for Rip. he's been on the show a couple times. He's done yeah. the audio for this, mm-hmm. and he. I'll plug him again. He on November twentieth, I think it is, at the end of November. He's doing his album with a live orchestra, which that's is amazing. that's crazy. Rad. So I can't have the dates for that, but if he was here, I'm sure we'll have well, him on yeah. and have him plug his own show. But uh, I think it's like November twentieth. RobbieEllis.net. I know um, he has all the information there, but he's doing his album with a live orchestra. That's, that's awesome. Pretty great. That'll be really cool to see. Um, but yes, who would win in a fight is the improvised. Yes. It's more of a debate, if you will, not necessarily a game, but a debate of the old bar conversation of you pick two things and we see, determine who would win in a fight between these two things. Yeah. So I would like to start off. I was going to say, you got something already? And well, something's brilliant. You have to, it's the show inspires yes. who would win in a fight right yeah. now. So I want to say ASMR <laughs> who would win in a fight right now. Okay. 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 Like we're doing it ASMR? No, 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 we're going to do it. We're going to talk about two things and who would win in a fight. So are we talking, how about this? A vocal ASMRist. uh, Okay, that was not bad. That was bad. (laughs) An ASMR vocalist, if you will, Uh versus an ASMR um, sound effect, like a cruncher. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So a vocalist versus like a cruncher. We'll just say Mm. cruncher versus the short time. I'm going to say the cruncher is going to win. Oh. Because... Most uh, most of the vocalists, to my mind, seem like I hate to stereotype, but they seem like wayfish young women. <laughs> <laughs> and the and the crunchers are people that like they could look like anything. They're just like they could be just like weird old guys, like buff, huge, and they're just like, all right, now we're crinkle, let's, let's crinkle. Right. I'm, I'm they're gonna, gonna beat the shit out of that like nineteen year old in her basement. <laughs> You know, I'm gonna say this is a Texas thing. Or no? Yeah, <laughs> Plano, Texas. If I'm locked in a room, and you want to m- turn me into a crazy person, okay, it's gonna be the sound. Okay, well, they're both kind of sound. Oh, like if the it's psychological sound. torture, no, like a crink, like psychological, like oh. a, it's gonna be the crinkling, like the Chinese yeah. dripping on the floor. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, worse. Yeah, yeah. that's worse. That's worse. If I'm just sitting in like a room, like in jail, and all I hear is like for the whole time, I'm probably gonna go crazy. So I think that's going to win in my book as far as like over the vocal portion of it. Okay. I think it's very good. I think here, I'm, I'm, I'm really torn right now because I feel like the cruncher, they have something physical. They're holding a lot of tension. Like they're just, they just feel like they want to just have a lot of tension. They're yeah. releasing it out physically. But the vocalist, I feel they're also holding back. Think of it uh-huh. like, remember the movie Scream? It's like, we all go a little mad sometimes. Yeah. You know, it's like that like subdued... Uh, hush of a, of a voice you know so i think they're both like holding stuff back from a lot of energy but i'm gonna have to agree with you brad <laughs> no bro, both of you brad with the crunch yeah. i think the yeah. crunch because i think that the physicalness is there and they just yeah that, and eventually they'll come out vocally so i'm gonna go with the crunch as well so okay the crunch asmr will win that round do you have a ding ding for that Ooh, Jeff? I no? do. all right I'm looking oh, for my. <laughs> I'm looking for my next uh, who would win in the fight. Well, if you're thinking about it, Brad, do you have yeah. one on the top of your head who would win in a fight. Doesn't have to. It could be about anything. It could be like Second City, Second City versus IO, or stuff <laughs> we've talked about. Um, let me think here. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Joker. <laughs> That's yeah. where I was going. Oh, you're versus, going Joker. Yeah. Okay. Versus, uh, a. Man made entirely of collagen. Okay, <laughs> it's just sort of a hideous, okay. ab- like like abomination. I like this. No, I like this because collagen's <laughs> hot right now. It is hot. It's it's it's. I I don't know why. I, I'm with you, Brad. It's just like oh, collagen is like this nice word now. It's just like it used to be like vitamin A, good for you. Now it's like collagen. Yep. Um, Joker's hot right now too, though. Joker's very, very hot right very now. Hot. He's, he's always been hot. He's been yeah. hot since 1989. It's been... It, I think that The Collagen Man... The Collagen that Man. That could be a good horror name for a movie. Like The Collagen Man. Like Candyman, The Collagen Man. I actually think... I'm starting like to horror. realize that Joker has entered the the like pop culture realm of like Shrek. Like mm. Joker has become <laughs> a literal joke... In the way that like uh, Shrek or Minions has, do you know what I mean? It's starting to enter that arena. It's getting like too, it's just kind of this. It just keep well, people are making fun of it and like, oh, it's Joker. He's so bad. Okay, and, like okay. making sure. fun of that. Oh, he's an agent of chaos and yeah. like. Okay. 
like now that we've had so many jokers we've had yeah. there's been there's been a lot there and has been. i mean the thing is like how many takes can we get on this character i mean we've had yeah. i mean the cool thing is what i love about joker is he was created in like 19 no mm. at least the facts on this Ooh. i think he was invented in 1941 or 43 and the cool thing i do like about this is that since the comic book creation He's never. He's intentionally not had a consistent origin. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. not like this is the origin. Like Batman has the most famous origin mm -hmm. ever, but Joker has had a different writer, a different origin. So, and I, they keep on fucking with the audience to say like there is no, the, we'll never know the true mm -hmm. origin of Joker. You know, I like that. Mm -hmm. But Collagen Man's uh, origin <laughs> probably drank too much of this stuff. Probably yep. did too many half marathons and got those like packs afterwards. They give you mm -hmm. a free yeah, collagen yeah, pack yeah. like to promote, and then they put it, and then. Um, I don't know. Maybe it was I, when I think collagen. I'm just thinking like Botox. I don't know yeah, why I always yeah. go there. I'm just thinking like the trace. Like skin. This. this person is translucent. Yeah, I'm picturing. Sure, sure. Oh. So it's a th essentially Goop. like <clears throat> it's the collagen man is physically doing damage while the Joker is doing mental damage. Sure, I would say maybe. Oh, well, I mean, I'm gonna go see. Joker has a little bad complexion. He does. And he's got some little cringly hair, which I think he might need Collagen oh. Man for this. Yeah. So I think during the fight, the real Joker's going to be like, damn, I don't want to fight you anymore. Oh, I'm it's gonna, a team up. It's a team up. <gasps> and it's going to be like, Collagen Man, can we combine? Because I need this for my hair. Because oh. it's a little greenish right now. Like can you please I think help this is the skin? Jared Leto Joker that we're yeah, talking yeah, yeah. about. Sure, who sure. would do this. <laughs> that one. That one. Yeah. So uh, I think Collagen Man's going to win just as far as like with the love that he's going to give the real Joker. I like that's a very good answer. I, I'm mm -hmm. gonna go with Collagen Man as well yes. because I think the Joker is just gonna look at him and just start laughing and laughing and laughing, and he's, yeah, he's gonna yeah. be uncontrollable, and he just can't do anything, and he's just gonna like laugh himself to, to the submission to the fight. Yep. He's not gonna be able to like throw a punch or do any of his wacky contractions or anything mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. I think he's just gonna constantly <laughs> laugh, like the funniest thing ever, and he's just gonna he just can't contain himself. So. Okay. My point goes to Collagen Man. I feel like Joker would win because Joker would go after Collagen Man's loved ones. Like, uh, what is it? Like, Gluten Free Man, uh -huh. Vitamin E Man. Vitamin E I Man. I don't know. What, uh, a Keto what, Man. Yeah, a Keto. <laughs> a Keto Man. Uh, I don't know. Pressed Juice Man. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, what about the ladies? <laughs> There's got to be some love, like like Botox woman or, or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, oh, you gotta... I'm being sexist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I thought that was it was college and girl. Yeah, that's, college sorry. And girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's in the sequel. Okay, good. So I was in, I was, in a I stick was a good one. College man, Joker. One. All right, you got my, one down. My Joker one was going to be the Jack Nicholson Joker versus the Heath Ledger Joker. Oh, so I don't know if I'm going to keep with that, but uh, no, we already did Joker. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we're not doing that one. Well, let's just go. Let's do coffee. coffee. I'm gonna do coffee. Let's do like uh, like a caribou coffee versus Starbucks coffee. Is, is, car is, is caribou, caribou still around? I think oh, we already know the winner still. of this. Pete's coffee is that that's, oh, that's probably coffee. the next biggest one. How about we? Okay. I think almost anything versus Starbucks Star is going to sure. win because <laughs> Starbucks and I and I got it on the way here. The only reason I get it is because it's ubiquitous. All right. And 100%. every time I get it. Every time I get it, I think the same thing, which is they burned their coffee. They do. Every time they burn their coffee. Yep. It tastes like Why? shit. Why? Why do they burn it? I am cla I am yep. applauding. You I have not <laughs> said that better myself. The only reason I get it yep. is because it's well, I need coffee. There it is. Yeah. I get it. I taste it. Wow, this tastes bitter as hell. Yep. Yeah. It's it's, it's tastes not, burnt. burns better. Take your B description yeah. and throw it on there. Yep. Um I'm a hundred. That was beautifully said. That could be said. Maybe we could have like a. There's a boxing reference for you. Mike Tyson versus Buster Douglas. The 50 to one odds. Mm -hmm. Buster Douglas beats Mike Tyson's first. And we have all this hype for Starbucks. Like, oh, he's the chim. Starbucks is getting cocky right now. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. we're everywhere. But the product is shit. Well, we could do that. We could do Starbucks first. All like the the smaller guys, like the Heritage Coffee, to the uh, oh. you know, like all the little local people. Okay. Um, perfect cups and stuff like that. Okay. If we're imagining just Howard Schultz nice. trying to fight this fight, he will lose immediately to anyone. <laughs> if it's like him as the sort of embodiment of Starbucks, if that's what we're talking about. But I do think like the smaller, if we're going to go this route now, the smaller like coffee shops now are getting more popular between whether it's you're a hipster to mm -hmm. a supporting local now. So I feel like more people are going to go toward like the smaller local ones. Cause I feel like mm -hmm. even though you can find this in every single corner, 
how you described it is everybody's describing this now. It's like now they can actually taste good quality coffee over here. And it's like, well, I don't want to go spend $4 on this crap anymore. Mm-hmm. But well, $4 on this stuff yeah, is bulletproof. That's also, now, obviously, we know who would win this fight. Yeah, this is bulletproof. bulletproof. I mean, yeah. That's what he might go that <laughs> route. It's not going to win. I mean, of course it's, it's going to win. Yeah. It's bulletproof. Plus, it's got collagen growing oh, in it. Oh, yeah. I got collagen, man. This is the power of collagen, man, right here. This is the origin story yeah. of collagen, man. Um, if, right. you, if you like your coffee... Like you like your medicine, <laughs> you're gonna love cold brew bulletproof coffee. I love it. It tastes like oil. <laughs> I would say Starbucks wins, but I would put my money on the underdog just because I couldn't. I don't want to put more power to Starbucks, so I'll, I'll vote for the little guy. Maybe we'll get a, a, a lucky KO. So yeah. go to the underdog. I like all the little guys too. I think they're all gonna team up and uh, they're gonna fight the, the big guy. Yeah, and also the big guy. Like those employees, they're just gonna go home. They're not gonna fight. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're gonna be like, true. "You want me to do what? Yeah, Look, bro- I did. It's I did clopening. Fight. I gotta pick up my kid from daycare, and yeah, <laughs> I'm tired. And they paid me like nothing. And I'm tired of making these goodbye. packed lunches of eggs. Starbucks and does have decent food, though. Their egg bites are pretty damn good. Yeah, if you had their egg bites. Oh yeah, and also they pay for their education or something. They give them. They pay the employees well, college. Fix the facts on that. Oh. Fix the facts on that. Did you say they pay them with collagen? <laughs> no, no, no. no. They, they pay for their college. Oh, okay. Oh, it's going to be a matter of oh, time until sh- Starbucks promotes the collagen <laughs> coffee. It's going to be a matter of time, Starbucks. Dad, I got a scholarship to collagen. <laughs> you got a what? 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 Oh, sorry. I got mixed up. I applied to the wrong thing. <laughs> CSU, Collagen State. Right? <laughs> oh, Too funny. Well, that was a fun round of who would win in a fight thank you gentlemen for playing that was a lot of fun oh, we haven't played that in one in a while yeah, that's a good a minute one. that's always a fun game um normally at the end of the show we rate the beer but we're just having some coffee having yep. some talk so let's just wrap up the show I'll, um i'll rate oh you gotta rate this yeah. okay you rate zero it. i'm rating this zero <laughs> <laughs> That was the Starbucks. That one's two. Okay. College and this the one was two. maybe a, a six or seven. Okay. Great. So we got a zero, a two, and a six. Yeah. And I'll just say, you know, drink more coffee. I think my rating's pretty equal as well. There we go. Get it. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 203 of A Brew With You. I've been one of your hosts, Big Deal Blake. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, but most importantly, patreon.com slash a brew with you to get your extra rewards and perks and just support the show jeff where can the lovely people find you want to follow me personally on instagram at the real jays too again follow the show on any social media platform uh yeah listen to us anywhere you want brad uh i know you have uh, the show to plug again and if there's anything personally like any handles or website or anything else you have on the side as well um devil's daughter yeah. will be fridays at 10 30 at what? io theater I'm sorry that I talked shit about Second City. <laughs> it was like pretty unreasonable considering they're the only theater that pays. pays. You have like a you have like a wanted sign on there. Um, uh, what else? Campfire is in October. It's a show where we have like uh, paranormal experts and ghost tour guides and. Uh, Oh my God! The International Muse- Museum of Surgical Science is doing a Civil War amputation demonstration. Are you serious? What? Yeah, the, and and then we uh, do improv inspired by those oh, stories. Wow. Cool. Yeah, cool. so people with like ghost stories that like happen specifically to them. Oh, that's a great are, set. Yeah. When is yeah. that? That is on Wednesdays at ten at IO. That's really cool. Yeah, that's a really. Oh, neat. that's a real fun one. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to look into that one too. Yeah, we'll go to the show. Um, I don't think I have. I'll plug, but Google Brad Pike and then uh, go to that wrestler's, uh, you know, website, whatever. I think there's a <laughs> well, Brad well, Pike wrestler and then scroll down and then just click on whatever. Do that you have any me. ASMR uh, channels that you want to plug? Um, <laughs> yes, I will plug. Uh, <laughs> when will I plug of the ASMRs that I watch? Oh my god! Just uh, at Russian Brad or something like that. What are you going to start your own? Uh, You know what I'm going to plug? I'm going to plug the YouTube video of a guy just like just talking about who this was. This is a rock bottom for me watching YouTube. (laughs) 
a guy watching uh, or describing a Happy Meal Shrek toy, and he's doing it as a as a bit. I'm like he's sort of like. And, and if we turn Shrek to the back, there's some little holes in his back. I didn't know Shrek had little holes in his back. <laughs> and he's being funny, but it is it works as ASMR. And so I watched that video like oh, 100 times. <laughs> <laughs> We're Shrek YouTube video guys. Oh, of a Happy Meal toy. Love which just, oh. has, I'll just make you a handle, ASMR Brad or yeah, something. Yeah, there you like go. Plug yeah, but also, trending. I.O., uh, mm-hmm. Two shows going on there, and if we uh, we'll, we'll plug the rest of it too on the yeah. and just come to I O whenever, and I'll yeah. probably be house managing, and that's Sweet. its own show. Love it. <laughs> well, Brad, thanks, thanks man. Again. It was nice meeting you. It yeah, really it was, was nice and I really you appreciate uh, you know just meeting you a couple days ago officially and coming on the show last minute. Really appreciate it, man. It's really been oh, great. Yeah. So it was great. All right, at the end of the episode, we have our final segment of fixing the facts and airing the airs. Thank you, everybody, and remember, we have live show October twentieth, Chicago yeah. Podcast Festival dot org. Buy the tickets now. They're out. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around at the end of the show for the final segment of... Fixing the facts and the arrows. Yes. The final <laughs> segment where we correct everything we got wrong or fill in the gaps for everything we didn't know. Jeff, how many do we have today? Today, we have three. Ooh, trois. Ooh, two, trois. Number one. Jesse Pinkman, what movie was he in? It was Need for Speed yeah. in 2014. Yep. Poor video game movies. I think I mean, we've had a great, one successful great video game. game movie, and that was that Pikachu movie that just came out in May. Oh boy! And Detective that, Pikachu. Yeah. Is that does that? I guess that technically counts as a video game movie. It is. But a, it's, uh, yeah. It's also a cartoon. It's a, well, yeah. It's got to be a video, but I mean, it's that's. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Pokemon yeah. is a phenomenon. Yes. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's like, like worldwide. Too. Yeah, it's, oh. Yeah. You know, I think, I, I think, oh, I'm almost positive on this. I don't want to fix the facts within fix the facts. Right. But I'm very, very confident that Pokemon now has become the number one property of Nintendo. It finally surpassed oh, Mario. Yeah. That's sad. About Whoa. It. That's sad. Mario's number one in my book. In my, it's just not day four, baby. <laughs> Mario for life. Uh, yeah. My number one is Jesus Christ. Uh, I never played that video it. game. Yeah. It's that like- really good. Nintendo's Jesus Christ. You should check it out. It's, what year did that come out? Um, uh, 2000, 2019 <laughs> years ago. Yeah. I was That's like, good. all right, what's the funny joke yeah. answer? I don't know. 420, 911. Yeah, I don't care. Right. <laughs> Peace. Very nice. Uh, number two. Number two. When was Joker created? Uh, the Joker 40. was undergone many revisions since its 1940 debut. Forty. Whoa. Ah, crazy. It's close. pretty. It's pretty crazy how like in that issue, like the the first issue with Joker, he's basically Joker already. He's yeah. already yeah. killing people. He's yeah. already impersonating people. He's doing all the Joker things. It like, like, and he, right looks, off the he bat. looks like Joker. I mean, he looks. You know, like the, the clown suit and everything. Like, it's like, and the, the, the purple suit and all. I yep. think that's yep. how they kept that alive still. The character was introduced in Batman 1 in 1940, in which he announces that he will kill three of Gotham's prominent citizens, including the mayor. Damn. Yeah. Which is exactly what he does For in the kids. movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, didn't Batman have a gun back then? Uh, yeah, I think he did, yeah. probably. The, he used some weapons back then, yeah. And I know his car had some guns on it, too, and whatnot. Okay, good stuff. 1940. And the last one. Oops, sorry. Hold on. Uh, the Starbucks College Program. They do have one. It's called the Starbucks College Achievement Plan. Uh, it is first introduced in 2014 as a first-of-its-kind partnership with Arizona State University that creates an opportunity for all eligible U.S. partners and employees to earn their bachelor's degree with full tuition coverage all the way to graduation at ASU's top-ranked online degree program. Yeah. So well, I'm assuming you have to probably like apply for it and write something about uh, it. Got to apply. I can't just be a Starbucks employee and you get a full just education. A, can't just pour coffee and get free four years uh, at ASU. This country sucks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, you get f- full ride to ASU. Yeah, that ain't the number one party school in America. Yeah, I think it's the number one school for uh, STDs as well. So make your choices out there, kids. Remember, Ooh, it might be free, but you might want to fact check the <laughs> STDs. <laughs> number one in a- STDs. I think I think it's USC and ASU are the top two. No. Now, why do you know that right off the top yeah, of your head? That's a little suspicious. That's Jeff. Interesting. <laughs> no, no comment. No comment. What an interesting <laughs> fact. It just well, my have. first two years I went to ASU. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> my last two years I went to USC. All right. Cool. 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 All right, everybody. That was our final segment called Fixing the Facts and Airing the Errors. 
Thank you, Brad, for joining us for this segment. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for sticking around. And for any of you patrons at the $5 tier or more, you can go to patreon.com slash a brew with you to get our post show for extra content for this episode. And we're just going to have some fun, have some laughs, talk about whatever we want to talk about. Hell yeah. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you next week. We'll see you guys. Bye. Bye-bye.